Maurice Berard was born in France and had mountaineering in his genes. He had his forefathers who were climbers too, so it was expected that he would be indulged in mountaineering too. And yes, he was. On the other hand, Lillian was also France born, and from the start she had the passion to know and experience more and more about mountains and their lives. Lillian and Maurice Berard were extraordinary individuals who sought solace and liberation amidst the grandeur of nature. Their love for each other in the mountains knew no bounds. They were high on love, and together they explored many of the mountains. Although they used to climb a few mountains now and then, they came into focus after ascending high-altitude mountains like the Himalayan and Karakoram ranges, emphasizing alpine style and fast and light ascents. They used no extra equipment or oxygen to ascend. The ascent to K2, the second highest mountain and the killer mountain, was similar to the other ascents as they decided not to take any extra help. It stands at 28,251 feet high above the ground. K2 is considered a much more dangerous climb than Everest and other mountains. They decided to ascend the K2 in the beautiful, clear, and enchanting weather of June. It was June 12, 1986, when they started their ascent to the K2 with two other climbers. Wanda Rukowicz was a Polish mountaineer and Michael Parmentier was a French mountaineer. Wanda was already a successful climber and was excited to be part of this French expedition as a couple in the Polish Mountaineer had mutual respect. Michael and Wanda, however, were not in a good mood with each other. There was a little tension between the two. But this couldn't underestimate the enthusiasm all of them had to reach K2. So this small team of four, after raising enough funds for their climb to K2, headed for the dream they all saw. The start of Lillian and Maurice's expedition was not a good one as they forgot their passport, valets, airline tickets, and thousands of dollars for expedition expenses in the back seat of the taxi. Now this was a challenge that they couldn't cope with as they were already on their way and couldn't afford to waste time on finding a taxi driver to get their things back. So they left just like that, without any essentials with them. On their way, they met Wanda and Michael in a motel that gives services to the K2 Mountaineer before heading. Since it was the middle of June, a preferable time for expeditions to mountains, they also met Alan Roos, who happened to be the first British mountaineer who summited K2. So with all the necessary information and equipment, the French expedition team left for the base camp. They began their summit on June 18, 1986. They decided to go for the traditional Abruzzi spur route. Lillian and Maurice were very confident and bent on climbing the K2 as fast as possible and becoming the first couple in history to ascend the riskier mountain. They believed in each other and knew that they would keep lifting each other's morale to achieve what they came for. As they decided to not bring any artificial oxygen or extra supplements, they were aware of the danger they might encounter. Also, they were the first ones to attempt this ascent so they could find additional challenges as there would be no camp ahead of them to assist and guide them on how to move, no ropes and no paths to follow. So in short, they were on their own and essentially were making ways for other climbers behind them to follow up. They spent their first night at Camp 1 at around 6,300 meters. They were firm with their progress, but slow. From the very start, Lillian and Maurice were slow, and this might have been a mistake that led up to what happened next. They skipped Camp 2 and chose to camp at 7,100 meters on the second night. They were on the ridge near the Black Pyramid. They were going well so far, and to remain in this position, they decided to lessen their burden of equipment, so they left some of the stuff behind. On the third day, they were at around 7,700 meters. Wanda, after the expedition, described this point as, it was under the big barrier of the overhanging Siracs in a conveniently level patch of snow, which was only a little dangerous. Their shoddy strategies had now backfired on them. Not long above their place of bivouac, Wanda and the Berards noticed a collapsed snow bridge across a divide and made the decision to tie up. The snow bridge had not been broken when Michael had passed it, so he had gone with the rope still in his pack. They were left with no choice now. The rope was in Michael's bag, and then it too had broken because of its weight on it. To avoid the slot, the three remaining climbers had to take a perilous and strenuous diversion. Their detour ended at the summit with a difficult three meter high overhang. They made it up, but it took a tremendous amount of time and work. The fourth day happened to be very tough as the weather worsened 
and the two women, Lillian and Wanda, were exhausted to the point that it was hard to move ahead. At this point, they were at 7,900 meters. Maurice, too, was exhausted and done for the day. However, Michael seemed to be in a good state and was excited to move close to K2. Since he was the only one in a stable position mentally, he realized that their progress was slow and this was not how they expected it to go like this. This was a danger to their safety too. The weather was getting bad minute by minute and they had to ascend the mountain as soon as possible. At this moment, they discussed whether they should continue with the summit or not. After a little discussion, they decided to move on and complete the summit. Was this a mistake too? Seems like yes, because the next day was not easy on them. Wanda and their teammates had entered the death zone, a state in which the body gradually deteriorated. At altitude, it is torturous exertion to get one's leg out of one icy hole just to sink deeper into the next while leaning on an ice axe and gasping for air. Michael proved to be the strongest and he was the one to find a place to camp at around 8,300 meters just 300 meters away from the peak of K2. At this point, they were only left with very little fuel for one stove that was left, one two-people tent, and no sleeping bags. The condition was not comfortable for Lillian and Maurice, as they were hoping to go ahead fast, but their strength was in vain. All night, they were huddled together with almost no sleep, as the tension to stay healthy was growing more and more. They were reminding each other of the big goal they were here for. Michael, remembering this night, said that this was the toughest night for us, as every one of us was struggling to feel positive and healthy. They were expecting it to be a two-day expedition, but things were much slower than expected, and they were not prepared for such a long trek mentally and physically. They were running out of fuel for their stove, and the equipment was almost finished, so they had to do it fast. Lillian and Maurice were holding on to each other and knew that the next day would be full of hopes and success, and it was. On June 23, 1986, the four teammates, with new ambitions and high energy, left for the peak. They didn't sleep all night and were just looking forward to K2. But it wasn't that easy, as rocks and trenches came in their way. Wanda felt better than the previous night and was in high spirits. As they were heading, Wanda was struck to see their teammates stopping for a soup break. She was offered to stay, but she didn't and moved ahead for K2. Ultimately, Wanda became the first woman to summit K2 without any artificial oxygen. She reached the peak at around 10.15 a.m. and around 11 a.m. Lillian also reached. Her other teammates also joined them soon and there was a serene look on their faces. Hugs and tears all poured down, but the descent was not as they had expected. Lillian and Maurice were exhausted and decided to make a camp nearly 8,300 meters down the K2. Wanda and Michael knew it was dangerous, but since it was teamwork, so they decided to camp for a night there. The next morning, they all left for the base camp. The Berards were not in a good state and moved very slowly. Wanda and Michael did wait for them, but then they started pacing fast because they couldn't put themselves in danger that was visible in the weather. Michael at Camp 3 waited for the couple for two days, but there was no sign of them. Wanda waited for all three of them in the base camp for two days but when they didn't come, everyone started fearing the worst. But they saw Michael soon and helped him to get to the base camp. They all then hoped and prayed for the safety of the Berards, but to no avail, as they were never seen after this expedition. After a month of this expedition, Lillian's body was found by the Austrian Sphase on July 19th at the South Face. But Maurice's body was found after like 12, 13 years in 1988. His body was found on the glacier just above base camp. They both are buried near each other at the Gilkey Memorial at the base of K2. Lillian and Maurice Berard's tragic end reverberated across the mountaineer community, touching the hearts of adventurers worldwide. Though their lives are tragically cut short, their legacy endures, inspiring others to embrace life's challenges and appreciate the beauty of the world around us. The two souls love for each other in the mountains propel them to unimaginable heights. Their story is a testament to the fragility of human existence and the unfathomable nature of life.